Hey, welcome back to the channel. So, we got ourselves a new version preview. I think this is 3.8. No, 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 3.3.8. I forgot. <laughs> but let's get into it. It's Blazing Night Part 2. And I think we all know that there's gonna be uh, Amir in here and Kidu. We did saw him in uh, Fatima's storyline, but he only showed us. Uh, his basic attack. So, <laughs> yeah, they're hiding uh, Amir's skill very, very well. Uh, unlike Haley, like Haley, they they hide only her passive effect. Uh, this time, they hide both the second skill and the third skill. So we gotta take, we gotta finally see what can Amir do. Let's go. I wouldn't change a thing even if I could. Almost? Almost? Uh, <laughs> whatever. Let's get down to it. <laughs> Nowhere to hide. Nowhere to run. <sighs> Nowhere. Legendary to Wind run. Fighter. Okay. Oh, we got a second legendary. No one can stop me. Oh my God, Minotaur. A similar legendary fighter, Petros. Wow, he is so cool. I thought Joser would be <laughs> a better Minotaur, but oh my god, look at this design. Wow, this is... Yeah, he looks strong, but I wouldn't say like he, he resembles a Minotaur. Like Joser would have been a perfect fit for that. But uh, yeah, anyway... A uh, Minotaur, as our new Seamer Legendary Fighter. This is gonna be great. Let's see. Like always, as always, this like whenever they come out with uh, a new Seamer Legendary, it's gonna be breaking the meta. It's gonna be breaking the game, obviously. So let's just it's see. How do you want to see my soul? Oh my God, he 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 got that. Uh, you know. Like uh, Hercules Five, like he looks, he looks like, uh, how to say, an upgraded version of Taylor, <laughs> with a giant, uh, you know, you know, hammer. Like it's, it's not a hammer, it's a pillar, just like Taylor. Yeah, just like Taylor, it's a giant pillar. Blazing Night event, uh, yes, this is standard as usual. Uh, Amir storyline. Uh, hopefully it's a continuation of Fatima's story. Hey, wait, 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 what, what, what was that? Battle Redux. This is a trial, right? But look at that. It's a new boss. Wow. It's a new boss. Nice. It's a tentacle boss. <laughs> and as usual, that's the shop. And that's the loyalty chest too. Wow, this is... Uh, it's, it's the one that you can get a Legendary Esper for free, right? Yeah, wow. Nice. Yeah, this line have been really generous with their, uh, you know, reward. And look at that, Greywater Black Market is back. Oh, uh, we just got this recently, right? Like in this in this patch, like in Fatima's patch, I forgot, like, or, or before this. Yeah, they... They do want us to to spend our Nexus Crystal. But the one that is really, really worth it in here is just the Ripple Option Box here. If you are limited in your Nexus Crystal, then just grab the Ripple Option Box. Like, it's a guaranteed, uh, you know, Legendary Esper that you want instead of uh, gambling it on uh, Gacha. So, so it's worth, it's, it's at least worth that one to be more. And if you do want the similar record, yeah, obviously, but if you are limited on Nexus Crystal, like this is 800 Nexus. So, yeah, it's up to you if you do want this uh, to get closer to the similar legendary aspect that you want. But it is optional. It is optional. Although it's like 75 or 80% worth it. But if you are limited on your Nexus Crystal, then you can, you can try to skip this. I feel it so, I feel it so. Day night cycle, the home interface with transition between day and night based on your local time. Try it out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a nice addition to UI. Rival run synthesized level. 
It's not available. I think we did find it. This, this what is this for? As for oh yeah, this we we've already got this right in this in this current map. Yeah, we already got this. Yep. Oh, nothing else new. Yeah, no, no end of story something. So we're gonna go here. Pets three point four point eight. So that's that's the the pets notes number. <laughs> yeah. So we got ourselves Amir and Kidu five star win. I believe it's a fighter. Yes, Amir is a fighter expert who excels at countering experts with access to shield. Nice. This is a counter to Lian. So obviously, those of you who care so much about PvP get Amir, like. It's been a problem nowadays about uh, Lian and Sakura combo, like nobody can break their shields. Although there are a lot of experts that can use buff blocker and, and disease, uh, notably Momo and Zora. Like Momo is the recent addition to our counter to current meta. But um, it's not enough, it's not enough. Just Momo alone is not enough to to kill them. So we got Amir to prevent them from getting shield first hand. Let's go. Ability one, don't let's charge attacks one enemy multiple times. Yeah, we've already seen this. Like this is the first ability that we saw in Fatima's storyline about Enkidu. I do want to wait, I'm gonna I'm gonna play some uh background music. Just so it's not that let's see. Plan. <laughs> so yeah, and because the, we've only seen his first skill, we didn't see what the zest is. What is this? Like, yeah, we didn't get zest on Fatima's storyline. And uh, ability to protect her will passive, passive gain zest as the start of a round. Taking hits, recover hate speed. This is really good. Like this, gonna increase Amir's uh, survivability. And I don't know what stats Amir is using. Like, usually it attacks one enemy multiple times based on something, like based on attack or based on what, it doesn't mention anywhere here. So we still don't know what uh, main stats Amir is using. But if he is using, like, you know, either defense or HP, this is going to be very, very tanky for him. But if it's uh, an attack fighter, then this at least going to help him survive a little bit more, just like Momo, you know. And, and yeah. For Momo's case, uh, she needs to attack the enemy to lifesteal uh, her health back. But uh, this one, you heal health when you take hit, just like uh, Lian's shield and also just like Genie. Yeah, just like Genie. Hopefully, the percentage number is not too OP. Like Genie is already uh, good enough, but Genie uh, kind of like still not enough. But looking at the ability that Amir has, if he has the same survivability as, as Genie, it's gonna be really, really strong. When enemies gain shield, cast Righteous Resolve on a random target. And what is Righteous Resolve? Attacks one enemy, dispels their shield, reduces their maximum HP, gains Zest. I, don't, I still don't know what Zest is, and it doesn't say anywhere here what Zest is. I believe this is just like a number counter, just like, mm, just like, just like Wuyo, yeah, like just like Wuyo. It's, it's just a number counter. It doesn't give you any any uh, bonus stats or whatever. Not Wuyo. It's it's Fatima, yeah, just like Fatima. <coughs> I think Wuyo still gives you uh, a defense stats. Now, uh, so you're gonna uh, when enemies gain shield, you're gonna attack one enemy on a random target, <laughs> so it's not always gonna hit the, the person who gains shield, you know? But most of the time, the one get that gains shield is AoE ability, like all of, all five of them gonna get shield, so any random target will be the one that have shield, so at least you're gonna dispel one of the enemy's shield, and then you're gonna reduce their maximum hit speed, this is gonna help a lot, because for Nowadays, I've heard a lot of complaints like about the Wuyo combo being like insanely strong. Obviously, like I've already mentioned it in my Wuyo analysis, like she is insanely, insanely OP. <laughs> but um, yeah, as always, a Simmer Legendary Asper, so not many players will have her and you require a lot of investment in order to make her good. 
So it's gonna be a problem for all those high ranker and pay to win. So yeah, they can just fight it out with their money up there. So for all of you who are free to play players and newer players, it's not gonna be that much problem. But still, we do look out for uh, you know balance in every single Esper and uh, lineup. So this one gonna help you in clearing tankier Esper, you know, because. Uh, this uh, still until now the only esper that can remove uh, maximum HP reduction is only Ahmed. Yes, yes, yes. So there is no other way you can remove maximum HP reduction. So unless the enemy have Ahmed, nothing can stop this. You know. So this is still the strongest debuff in this game. Uh, now, after that, when Zest reaches maximum stacks, I don't know how many stacks that is. Uh, consumes all stacks of Zest, dispels his debuff, and cast Justice Serve. Okay, so this means that the moment you get maximum Zest stacks that you can gain by using your first skill, or if enemy gets shield, yeah, so I was thinking that if you are stunned, uh, you need to actively cast your first skill. Obviously, you cannot do that, so you cannot dispel your stun debuff. But it helps with this, you know. If the enemy gains shield and you are stunned, you will dispel your stun and cast Justice Serve. And Justice Serve is this, this third skill. You're gonna cast your third skill. This is a, a new Intisar. This is a new Intisar. But this one attacks all enemies. This is great. You know, just like Fatima gains. Oh yeah, this is just like Fatima, not not Intisar. This is just like Fatima gains divine help. What is what the hell is divine help? Where is divine help? Uh, if Amir's if Amir's hate speed is above a specific percentage, reduce a target's maximum hate speed. Wow, nice. AOE maximum hate speed reduction. This is good as long as Amir's is healthy. And if Amir has divine help, perform a pursuit attack with righteous resolve on a random target. Okay, you're gonna perform a pursuit attack on, on random target using this one again. Yeah, so define help. I think this is just like another number counter, you know, just like Zest. <laughs> so if you have a divine help, that means that your your second and third or, or onward cast of your third skill will have the pursuit attack, not on your very first third skill ability cast. You know, you will have uh, this one if Amir has divine help yes so yeah that's what surely gonna happen I don't know if they count this differently like if they do it sentence by sentence then attacks all enemies gains divine help so by the time this thing uh this this how to say this uh, decision take into account he should have already get divine help from here right so we're gonna need to test this in PTR whether uh, it does work like that or you need to cast this on the second time onward to to get this uh, you know benefit you know. but again this is good because that means that every time every single time Amir do a pursuit attack or or third skill or if the enemy cast shield or or you use your first skill and max your zest you will be able to remove enemy shield which means that for for uh, Lian, who everybody, I think because of the previous, previous uh, Echo uh, banner, like every, a, a lot of players have uh, R6 Lian and it's been a problem, you know. So this one gonna help a lot in killing all those Lian. And, and because you gain zest from your first ability, that means that giving Avatara to Amir is going to be really really good for him so you already know one of the equipment that is required for Amir here and then uh, after ascension attacks all enemies inflicts disease this is really really good because uh, you know the counter to Lian is that uh, she is different to uh, all the other healer like all the other uh, older healer like Clara uh, Ahmed and Sally, they can all heal through disease. But all the newer healer, like Sakura and Lian, they cannot heal through disease. So this is 
perfectly made just to counter Lian and Sakura. <laughs> and I I want to see, like, because Sakura's shield is a golden buff, I don't know if, uh, you know, this thing, I mean, this one can remove that. You know, we will see. Like, um, you know, I, I don't think I can test this in PTR, but it's going to be insanely strong if somebody uh, were to test this and see whether this works on Sakura or not. Hopefully, the other YouTuber can cover on that part because obviously, you cannot see this from mine. <laughs> I, I don't have any friends who can test this with me and in my PTR account, I cannot do it to, to try it against uh, Sakura. So yeah. Uh, if it's if it happens to Sakura, then it's going to be insanely strong. Like obviously, you must have Amir if you care about PvP so much. But uh, if it doesn't dispel Sakura's shield, then at least it's gonna kill all those Lian players. Oh, oh yeah, that's that's the difference. Okay, so on Resonance one, Justice serves final damage increase. Justice serve with the third ability, so that's okay. We gonna see like how much percentage the, num the damage number is, like you know, uh, only in PPR we can see that. So right now we won't see how strong this ability is going to deal damage to the enemy. And then the Resonance 2, Chase Protector's Wheel, on the, that's the second ability, the passive, gain several stacks of zest at the start of a round. Obviously this gonna... Uh, increase your power spike by a lot because that means that you will be able to uh, do this like uh, this one yes you can do this uh, much faster at the beginning of your turn and then that means that you will dispel your debuff meaning preventing you to get the stun by the enemy and then cast just this serve which is the third ability so exactly just like uh fatima you know like you will be able to cast your third skill so we have three aspers that can cast their third skill even though they are fallen behind in terms of speed we have fatima we have amir and we have Uyo. so the requirement on all those three are different different so fatima requires the enemy to keep spamming their buffs and then for Wuyo, requires your allies to get attacked by multi-hit attacks. And then for Amir, just require the enemy to cast uh, shield. You know? Yeah. So those are the three different Esper that do use third skill as their counterattack. And then uh, Resonance 4 change Justice Surf, the third ability again. Gain several stacks of Divine Help. Okay, so I'm guessing that Divine Help is consumable. <laughs> like after you perform Pursuit Attack, you're gonna remove... Yeah, you're gonna remove your Divine Help above, I'm, I guess. Yeah, obviously looking at this, you're gonna, you're gonna remove that Divine Help once you cast your... Uh, you know, your, your, your Pursuit Attack. So this is gonna help you in casting a lot of third skill pursuit attack from the second attack on, uh, onward so on the resonance 6 the one that gives you should be the one that gives you the most power spike uh just this surf the third ability um, amir gains additional stacks of zest okay wait wait what amir gains additional stacks of zest uh-huh after he gains Divine Help, Righteous Resolve will also inflict disease on the target. So now you will inflict disease on your Pursuit Attack. Which is great, but I still don't understand about this one. My Amir gains additional stacks of Z is what? After you cast your third ability? Yeah, it doesn't give you any zest stacks, but now you will get zest at the beginning of your turn every time you cast your base, uh, basic ability or when you cast your third skill. Your third skill will also give you zest. zest. So that means that he gonna cast his righteous resolve a lot of times, uh, you know. And obviously because every time he, uh, when enemies gains shield no 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 not not here uh when zest reach maximum stack 
you will cast justice serve and justice serve itself will give you additional stacks of zest so it's just gonna uh you know looping in that in that uh you know order like you once your zest reach maximum stacks you're gonna cast your third skill and you already start with several stacks of zest because of this one so it's just like this this literally means that you're gonna require less stacks of zest like if, for example if you require 10 stacks of zest to cast your third skill here uh, to reach maximum stats stacks that means that if this gives you like three stacks of zest that means that uh you only basically require seven stacks of zest uh except for the very first turn of your uh battle you know so yeah this is insanely strong yeah the resonance six so uh but i think you don't really need to go until resonance stick six for him obviously this is gonna make him really really strong but uh uh, this one yes this one is the one that gives you the highest uh, power spike so if you do want to use Amir uh, at resonance you know he is already usable you don't really need uh, any duplicate on him but if you do want to use him in PvP and gain uh, an advantage against your enemies at least go until the resonance too because this will make him cast uh, this one much faster at the beginning of your uh, battle with Amir and that will give you a ton of advantage so yeah that is Amir um, quite alright but I'm not really that interested in in pulling for him like because I I still not competing with a high level players in PvP so I don't really see that many problem with Dian and and it is not something that is versatile you know like you don't really use him much in pve content like he is definitely a pvp asper so yeah for a value for a free-to-play players who doesn't spend a single uh, money on this game like this seems like a, a waste you know like uh, obviously if you've been following my channel like you know that i only pull aspers that have a ton of value in every single content from now until the very far future uh of the game you know so obviously you've seen that uh, my very best asper in that category is intisar and then i've i've found another one which is chu yao uh, and yeah, until those equivalent Asper again comes out uh, in the future, then I'll probably gonna skip all this, uh, you know, uh, non-versatile Asper. And so we gonna go to Petros, Minotaur, 5-star Seamer. Petros is a fighter specialized in dealing single target damage who excels at suppressing low HP enemies. <laughs> I can already guess from this. This is gonna counter Sujue, isn't it? <laughs> or or this is gonna counter a uh, Mavis. Oh my god, I, I'm looking forward to this. Let's see. Ability 1, Brute Force. This damage to one enemy based on Petros attack and makes you HP. This is nice. So, I don't know which percentage is gonna be higher, but at the very least, you will have Petros as a, f a, a bruiser. You know, he won't be as a uh, glass cannon as any other DPS, but because he make use of both his attack as, and maximum HP stats, then he will be able to be a little bit tankier while still deal high amount of damage. And the lower the enemy's HP, the higher the damage. Nice. This is uh, quite alright. Like in the PvE content, too bad that the bosses, the only bosses that have health are the the tower bosses and then also the ritual miracle. So in the desolate lands and the sentinel hunt and the falsetto fantasy, the boss doesn't have an HP bar, so you cannot have them at lower HP. So too bad you cannot use this to increase your uh rank and and damage number 
in the facet of fantasy and set in a hand but if he do deals enough damage then he might be getting into the list of esper but obviously you cannot exploit this thing or those bosses because um for bosses case like this this reminds me of an mmorpg world of warcraft like we have a skill called execute that you can use when the enemy is below 20 percent hp and oh god the 20 percent hp of a boss is still in the millions <laughs> and when when you can spam that skill for the next like 15 minutes of the game <laughs> it becomes insanely insanely strong yes so you will know if you are an mmorpg players you know what i'm talking about but yeah we're gonna go to the second ability like uh tldr this is insanely strong but only for against enemies with it's uh, a very high maximum hp so ability to fearsome fury enemies below a certain hp threshold cannot receive certain ally ability effects including healing buffs debuffs immediately immediately like that because every disability etc nice this kind of prevent graveless <laughs> hopefully hopefully i don't know like we do need to test this in the ptr like if this blocks mavis graveless goodbye mavis I've never have a problem against Mavis, like you know, uh, Tamaki, who is my friend, who saw me uh, in my in my account playing with my Intisar, also uh, saw how insanely strong my Intisar is. I can I can always one shot Mavis even without uh, Intisar third skill. So I never had a problem with Mavis Graveless, but. Uh, I bet this is a very very good news for all those players who have problem with Oli, Sujue, Mavis, and uh, probably probably uh, Jangjuli. Let's see, uh, certain ally ability effects. I don't know if the ability effects that comes from themselves is still blocked by this thing. You know, like, uh, and I don't know, like this one. I think this is this must be a passive, right? It doesn't say anything a passive here. But the sentence here looks like this is a passive, you know. So I bet this is gonna be a passive, the second ability. And so uh, I wonder if Jiang Juli uh, death prevention will be blocked by this, you know, death immunity, death prevention. I don't know if death immunity is the same as death uh, prevention. I think it's called delayed death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably the death prevention is delayed death. So. Uh, delayed that obviously uh, refers to Sujue's skill, like it is delayed by one turn, <laughs> so this is obviously gonna affect Sujue. Uh, that immunity, I don't know, like this is kind of like referring to Mavis, and so uh, I don't know if this is gonna prevent Hyde and Jiang Julie's self death preservation. So we're gonna need to test that and obviously i cannot test this in my ptr but this is insanely insanely good like this is what makes this character this asper a simmer legendary asper reduces damage taken nice this is gonna help him in further surviving the battle if the attacker's hp is below petros further reduces his damage taken nice but in the pvp because you are gonna use rival rune so you're gonna be dependent on what is the rival rune stats gonna give you but if you use him in the point war then you obviously do want to have a certain amount of hp maximum hp not gonna throw all your stats into attack you know you do need some hp too for petros and then when any enemy's hp is below a specific ratio uh petros enters irascible mode clears all his debuffs recovers hp and gains a bonus turn wow wow so when when he himself cannot move like like you you can just give him zero speed and when your ally deal damage to the enemy like someone like farah or someone that can uh you know uh move uh like really really fast uh someone like 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 uh, Chu Yao, Chu Yao that calls somebody else, like probably Chu Yao calling uh, my Intisar to attack someone, and then that someone straight up getting like uh, uh, dying amount of HP, then uh, Petros gonna make his move. <laughs> this is great and irascible, undispellable, so this means that this is a golden buff. 
Uh, increase the attack critical damage and counter attack chance. Nice. So just like Fatima, this uh, increase your uh, avatar chance of triggering, and then dealing damage recovers. So obviously you do want him to wear avatar. Dealing damage recovers HP when the carrier's HP is above an enemy's. When the carrier's HP. Also, this is Petros HP is above an enemy's immune to the enemy's ability effects. Wow. So all those effects like you know uh, debuffs and then a uh, percentage HP damage, I guess. I don't know. Like this also needs testing, like what kind of ability effects is prevented. But this just like uh I think it was Fatima, I think, uh or or Wuyo, yeah. Uh we also got a newer esper that also have this immunity to enemies' ability effects. Uh, they cannot be debuffed. So after casting an ability, performs a pursuit attack. So any ability, wow! After casting any ability, performs damage is based on the target's maximum HP percentage HP damage. Nice! Oh my god! I I straight up know what what is my next Simmer Esper gonna be. <laughs> I love this guy. Oh my god! I love this guy. And it flicks stun can be resisted. I don't want. Me. Oh my god! This is just one thing after another. Oh my god, this guy is OP. This is beyond OP. Wow. Yeah, so you you just need a, a DPS that can deal a fast damage and and make one enemy disappear at the beginning of battle. And straight up Petros gonna go into irascible mode, gains a bonus turn, and then cast his third ability. Okay, this ability is going to be not affected by any abilities. Okay, that's that's expected. And when he casts his third ability, deals damage to one enemy based on Petros attack and maximum HP. The lower the enemy HP, the higher the damage. And uh, on Ascension, gains attack up and critical damage up. Wow, this is exactly like Taylor. Like this is the the Simmer legendary version of Taylor. Wow, nice. And oh my god, this this too is going to increase his damage by a ton. So yeah, he doesn't need any speed. Oh my god. This is insane. Yeah. So he you just need someone to to hit the enemy and get him below certain hate speed threshold. Like it's gonna be really really easy doing this with Farah and Intisar or or any other Esper that is paired with Chu Yao, you know, and then trigger him to move with this bonus turn, and then he gonna cast his third ability, and somebody definitely gonna die. And the lower the enemy's HP, the higher the damage, and it, the AI will obviously gonna hit the guy who we hit in the first time, and trigger his uh, HP below specific ratio. He gotta hit this guy, because he is a similar Esper, so Unless there is another similar Esper on the enemy, the AI will definitely gonna aim for, you know, Esper with the lowest HP percentage. Yeah, so this is just exactly like Taylor, but with extra stuff, <laughs> with extra thing, extra percentage HP damage and stun. Wow, this is nice, and it prevents uh, death prevention. You know, so obviously the guy who we hit in the first place is gonna be followed up by Petros attack and die straight away so hopefully the guy who we did do uh, uh, do that is gonna be the most important as per in the enemy lineup hopefully it's either Wuyo or Sakura or Lian <laughs> this, is, this is interesting this is interesting okay resonance one Ah, uh, change. Fear some fury. Cooldown minus one third. Fear some fury is the second ability. Nice. So this is going to be insanely strong. So if you have a chance to get uh, a simmer legendary, if you can get Petros to resonance one, this is going to be insanely strong. Just like just like Wuyo, I think yeah, the difference between Wuyo resonance zero and Wuyo resonance one is like heaven and hell. So this one also because. Uh, it means that if you reduce the cooldown of this, this ability cooldown is not affected by any abilities. So this is the only thing that can affect the cooldown of your Fist of Fury, except for your your own character speed. Um, but because of this, you will be able to uh, trigger this one. 
uh, 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 this one, you know, you will be able to trigger this one more often and get a bonus turn, you know. So unlike Wuyo, who will get triggered when you hit the enemy certain amount of times, this one will get triggered when the enemy is dying. <laughs> nice. So yeah, resonance one insanely strong. Uh, a must if you have a choice of uh, which Simmer Legendary Esper you do want to pick. But at Resonance 0 himself, he is already insanely good. Uh, Resonance 2, Fierce of Fury again. When any enemy's HP is below, obviously pick that threshold. Okay, the threshold increased. Okay, so uh, hopefully, if the enemy is below 70% HP, it's gonna be OP. Yeah. Like, I, I, I'm guessing the threshold. Uh, without the second resonance, it's gonna be below 30% and then with threshold, it's gonna be below 50% but if uh, this light decided to get the threshold to below 50% and then below 70% this is OP this is OP so yeah, uh, I don't think that's gonna happen but uh, that's just my prediction uh, then the resonance for Rapid Pursuit with target HP is below 15%, damage plus 15%. Okay, this is gonna increase his damage even further because he already get this benefit, you know, on his first and third ability, the second ability is passive. So yeah, it's gonna increase his damage by a lot again. And then the resonance 6, change, fearsome fury again, the passive enemies below a certain HP ratio cannot receive certain liability effects. Okay, ratio increase. Ah. Okay, but what is uh, you know, what is important is this one, and this one will happen when the enemy is below one HP. So yeah, we don't really need the resonance six, but the one that you require the threshold, the ratio to be increased is this one healing. So this gonna affect. Uh, Lian, Sakura, and then the increased high AP gonna affect uh, Farah and Nora. I think who, who else cannot be affected by AP down? Yeah, so all those Esper, if this threshold is increased, you will uh, broaden the Esper that you can counter, notably uh, Farah and Nora and, and someone else, you know. Like, and and uh, Genie also, Genie won't be able to heal, and then Sakura, and then Lian, you know, this will not trigger after a certain percentage of uh, enemies HP, so insanely, insanely good. This gonna break the current meta, like every single Esper meta right now will die by him. <laughs> but. I don't think it's something that is insanely OP too because he only deals damage to one enemy. So yeah, you still have a fighting chance as the enemy if you encounter Petros. But if he get lucky and deal damage to the one important expert that you have, then yeah, he gonna break your entire lineup by just killing your important expert. Like he bypass uh, Su Jue and Mavis protection. So. Oh. Obviously, in a lineup, when you're thinking about lineup, like you use Sujue and maybe to protect your most valuable DPS, and then you also have, uh, you know, Chu Yao, uh, and and you know that can prevent your allies from dying, etc., etc. So your your main DPS is being protected by a lot of players. But if that main DPS is the one that is getting attacked by Petros, then good luck, nothing can help them. And I bet this one, they, they include the etc. here, you know, uh, it prevents also Chu Yao's uh, critical damage resist. <laughs> so this is insane, this is insane. So Chu Yao's critical damage resist gonna be prevented, maybe it's uh, graveless is prevented, Suju is that prevention prevented, Hide that prevention, I don't know. The self that prevention from Hide and Jiang Jili, I don't know if that is prevented too, but if that those two are prevented, then this is insanely OP. And then what else? What else? Um AP reduction, uh, AP AP increase from Farah is going to be prevented. And uh what else that can protect allies? Like Lian Shield, Sakura Shield. And then uh, Genie's healing. Oh my god, there are a ton. <laughs> Every single passive is not going to trigger in front of Petros. Yeah, this is <laughs> this Minotaur. It, it, 
Oh my god, this Minotaur is even stronger than Gilgamesh. Like, he, uh, his story-wise, it's not, <laughs> it's not possible, but, um, yeah. It's up to this light how they, how they view their god and goddess, you know. Like, they, they think Minotaur is much stronger than Gilgamesh, then, then so be it. <laughs> okay, so yeah, uh, new event, blah, 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 championship. We have another championship. Momo, ooh, take one in the championship. Too. Now we can we can increase our Momo's resonance, and this is going to be really really strong. So for the free to play players, Momo is one of the really really good Esper. Like, uh, is he? She is not that game changing. She is not taking the the spotlight much. But for me myself, I've been using Momo in my Jiang Yuli and Emma's. Uh, Hungiest team, and she's been shiny in my lineup. So I don't know about you, but um, yeah, for those of you who've seen my live uh, stream, like you probably seen uh, uh, my Momo's lineup. But um, yeah, I, I do recommend that if you if you have the resources, then take take part in the championship. You know, like it's not it's not a waste. Like at least you do get the reward by participating in the championship, the one that is in the bottom uh, lining up. You know, after you reach certain point, you will get a free uh, ripple of Momo. So at least do join that one. Don't need to go into the ranking, you know, just, just get that one. So uh, this one gonna stamina consumption, consume stamina <laughs> via, via any method, <laughs> nice. And then Ritual Miracle Fafnir, nice. Now we got the Fafnir. We previously did the Kronos and APF. Now we have the Fafnir and the Slate Land Flow. Nice. You can you can compete in either the stamina or the Fafnir. Like you know, if you are not confident with your in your Fafnir, then just spend all of your stamina in here. But if you are more confident in your Fafnir, then save your stamina and go for Fafnir here. Or maybe go for the flow. Yeah. So if you if you are not confident in these two, just use all of your stamina in the first stage. And then so the trials. Ah, boom, gacha, great one. I would like boom. So it's so well, it's maybe. Amir, okay. The limited echo event is Amir, Liora, Tia, and Jinchu. I do love to. Be able to get my hand on Resonance 6 Liora, but I know my place. I'm a free-to-play player, so obviously I won't be able to spend with stones until I get I reach Resonance 6 in here. So yeah, uh, I don't know if I should pull this one, but uh, if you still don't have Jinchu at Resonance 2 and you do have Mavis, then this is your chance. This is your chance to get your Jinchu to Resonance 2. Obviously, I'm not really interested in Amir here, so yeah, we will see, we will see. So that's it. Uh, oh, after the update, Yalina and Yuxu can be obtained from Echo. So I, I don't have Yalina until now, because I quit the game. Uh, one of the very, very good Asper that is very, very versatile is Feng Shun, and because I quit this slide and when Feng Shun came out, like, so I don't have Feng Shun, but I would say, like, he is on par among my Intisar and Chu Yao's versatility. So, yeah, Yalina is also one of the Esper that I do want because Yalina is really good as a, an epic Esper. But now I can finally get her in the Echo. So, that's it for uh, this patch analysis, guys. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the PTR testing. Bye bye.